Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today I just want to explain everything I've learned about the PS3 Fat Yellow Lighting of Deathing. Yellow Lighting of Deathing, yes. That's what I want to talk about. This is going to be a little bit of a less structured video. I'm just going to free ball tell you guys everything I know as we go through this PS3. And uh, any, if you know a little bit more about any topic or anything I say, feel free to leave all of that in the comments. I'd love to learn a little bit more. Also, everything that I'm saying, this is all just my knowledge that I've acquired through fixing these a lot. So I don't know how accurate, perfectly correct it is, but I mean, I've fixed a bunch of them, so I think it might, I think it might work. So anyway, so this is a PS3 without the shell on top. I've taken it apart for the sake of the video. This is the CD drive. This is the power supply unit. Now, the thing I want to point out about this is it's metal. Metal gets hot. So, in the last revision of the PS3 Fat, they actually had a plastic uh, power supply unit, which then led to the PS3 Slim's plastic power supply unit. So the first thing I want to understand is the design, is let's look at the design of this thing, and let's understand that, because you can't fix anything, or you can't, modify anything if you don't understand its design so that's the most important part which we'll be talking about now now if you look at the ps3 slim's design what you'll see is this is moved to the back and it's all right here and it's plastic so why they did that is as we take this apart a little bit more and more you'll understand because it was it was brilliant it was their best move it was great so we'll take all these off and now we have the PS3. This is the motherboard. And now this is just a metal shell on top with some, you know, the switches for like the memory cards and then the buttons and all that. But underneath this, this is the memory card. And then underneath, we just have it inside the shell. So we'll just be, we'll be taking this out. Actually, it's already taken out. So I have it right here, but I just want to explain what it, what it is. So this pretty much is inside just like that. So this is exactly what's underneath here. And here you have the tension brackets for the CPU and the GPU. So remember as to this is where the power supply is. And actually these two pins right here are what connects to the power supply right there. You know, it's like burnt. It's like so dirty, it's burnt. And then that connects there. So with the tension bracket being right here, this is one of your critical, most important chips is located directly underneath this super hot aluminum metal, I don't know what material it's made out of, power supply. So with this getting so hot, being right above the chips, led to the PS3 Slim having the power supply unit in the back away from the chips. So, now that we have our motherboard out and we know the location of the power supply, we know that the fan is underneath, the fan's underneath, and it's actually, this is the fan for orientation purposes. So that's how that goes. So you have the fan underneath, but the power supply right here cooking that chip. And especially if you leave it on for a long time, you have poor airflow. That's why one, the first step to prevention is to leave this thing tilted on its side. And that's the best way to start preventing it from getting hot. Because, as you'll see, if you tip this on its side, you can see this the fan's right here, by the way. This is where the fan is. You can see that air is being sucked in through here and then out through the back vents. So that's why having it upright in the PS3 this has, there's nothing ever gonna be against this unless you put something on top of it. So you'll never impede the airflow. Air will be able to be sucked in and then out the back. But is that enough? I don't think it's enough, but it's a good start to have your PS3 upwards like that. These holes are not big enough, so you can always case mod that if you want to increase airflow. But anyway, let's get back to the chips. And this is how this normally is. And like I said, there's a fan inside of here usually. Air in, air out. It's just like a car. You need air to go in and then you need air to go out. In here you have your, uh, your graphics card, 
and then your processor, your i7 and your GTX 1060, whatever, GPU, CPU. And then here you have your PS2. This is your PS2. This is the exact chip for your PS2. Man, so this is your PS2 chip right here. And then this is your Southbridge, which I don't know what a Southbridge chip does, is, or anything about it. Somebody please tell me in the comments. I would love to learn. If you understand how these chips work, you can understand a little bit better about how much airflow they need and how cool they need to be. So with this one, if you look, this goop on top is just the thermal paste. But if you see this black, I think that's part of the inside of the chip that has melted because this one got way too hot. So the anatomy of the chip is this piece on top, this is your heat shield, heat spreader, heat sink, whatever you want to call it. Uh, underneath it is a die, and which is a square little chip in the middle. And then underneath your die is your underfiller or your interposer, depending on the chip, I think. And then underneath that is your substrate. And your substrate, or your, you know, I just call it like a PCB board, as you can see is actually this bottom piece, this square piece that goes right here. So that's the anatomy of the chip, I guess you would say, of how it works. And then underneath the substrate or the PCB is tiny, tiny little square solder pads. And those tiny little square solder pads are then connected to solder pads on the actual board. And they're connected by tiny little solder balls. And that's a whole process to, to remove that and then to reapply the little tiny balls of solder and then reapply this chip is a whole huge process that I don't think is worth it, especially when you see this black that might be the inside of the chip being completely melted and destroyed. So it's a tough one. That's professional. I don't have the equipment. It's way above my pay grade. I wish I did. It would be cool. It would be a fun little thing to try and do. But there's some other things that you can do to prevent it so you don't have to get to the point where you have to reball it or you have to send it out to somebody to be reballed because I'm pretty sure that could be pricey. So now that we understand the anatomy of these chips a little bit better, we understand the poor ventilation and we understand the, the power supply being so hot, we have a better idea of what went wrong. So it could be anything from the chip being melted on the inside the underfiller, the interposer being melted, having a poor solder connection between the actual chip and the PCB board due to the little balls of solder got so hot that they melted and it shifted, which is a high possibility. The thermal paste could have dried out and it's not passing heat from this to, um, to the fan. And then because it's not passing heat, it overheats and then causes it to shut down. But that's a much, much more less likely option because if that did happen, then further damage could happen. We have a good general idea of the location of these chips and the reasons what went wrong. So let's talk about prevention of this and then actual repair. I'm actually gonna talk about them in the opposite order though. So what I would do is I would never listen to the internet when the internet tells you to put something in the oven. If the internet tells you to put something in the oven, don't do it, never. Never ever. If you've put one of these in the oven and it's worked, great. I'm happy. I'm happy that worked. Don't do that again. My, my, my thoughts, my opinion on that. I would never do that um, and I would never want anybody else to do that because you're not supposed to. So anyway, what the oven method is trying to do is it's trying to get you to reflow this chip by heating up all the solder and then letting it get hot and then letting the chip reset into place. Now, what you can do instead of putting it in your oven is you can take a hot air gun, drown this thing in flux, and then reflow it. But if you were to do that, I would reflow it at about 725 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know, what is that, like three, 45 Celsius, I don't know. So that's one thing that you could do. But if you were to do that, you would need to put some sort of heat shielding around the rest of the board so you didn't 
reflow any of these other components and you didn't heat them up and you didn't cook all these other components. Also, if you were to do that and you and like you accidentally just a tiny little like nudge, like just that enough right there could be enough to as you're reflowing the chip for the chip to move and then set in the wrong place. So you have to be ultra very careful, very, very still if you were to reflow this chip, which would, like I said, drown it in flux so the flux can seep underneath the chip, which will then create, it'll clean the solder and get the solder to stick, which is what you want. And that's why you use flux before you solder something is because it helps it stick. And that's what you want is you want a good, strong connection. That's why I say drown it in flux. So the flux gets all underneath and it'll flow under. And that's what you want. Uh, so that would be reflowing. And that's honestly, that's just what I do most of the time. Like if I get one of these, that's dead. This one, I don't even know because of this black, all this black stuff. Like I've, I've never seen that before. So it might be, might be melted on the inside. So anyway, so that's one repair option. And then obviously you use a high grade thermal paste when you reapply all of this. And then when I do do these repairs, I always tell people, Hey, would you like a, a fan mod or something? Would you like it to be fan modded? Would you like more power f to help prevent it from, you know, happening again kind of thing? Because just because we're fit. So this chip needing a reflow isn't the problem. The problem is the ventilation and the airflow and the where the PSU is. So the problem's in the design. We can't redesign this because Sony, Sony did. They made the PS3 slim, but they took out this chip. And this is why people want this one is this PS2 chip convenience and because it's cool. So we can't redesign it. So we need to come up with a new solution because if we're just fixing this chip needing a reflow is the result of the poor design. So we're fixing the result. We're not fixing the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is the design, which is essentially kind of proven by Sony because they redesigned this and made it wonderful. The PS3 Slim is an amazing machine. It's an engineering marvel. I love that thing. And then if you look at the PS4, the PS4 design is very similar to the PS3's design just, or the PS3 Slim's design just super beefed up. So prevention would be to doing some sort of fan mod, some sort of potentiometer so you can crack up the power of the fan. I actually did a video about my uh, PS3 fat potentiometer. It was my very, very first YouTube video and I didn't upload it for anyway, that was before I knew how to make videos, but I didn't explain any of it. I just showed you. So the fan mods, there's numerous options that you can do and there's a whole bunch of things and you can actually get creative with it. So a lot of people are anti destroying the case. I'm not unless you do a poor job. If you do a poor job of it, I'm against it. If you do a good job, I'm for it kind of thing. And if you're not just out, you know, destroying cases over and over and over, it's your personal one. It's your baby. Like that's yours. That's your job. You're proud of it. You're happy. Uh, these are the ventilation for the PS3. So this is where the air comes in. Now, what I feel I would want to do is I would want to somehow increase this ventilation in this area so there can be more air coming in. Increase the power of the fan so you can push that air out. Now, another method, which I'm not sure, I haven't done this and I'm contemplating, I am, I think I'm going to do it, would be to mod the top of it to have fans here. So if the fans are here, they're blowing, they're taking the heat from this power supply unit that's so hot and sucking it out. I'm not sure if that would create a vacuum though, because let's go back to the way the PS3 is. So you got the fan here, air's going in the top, it's going through and then it's going out that way. So then by having air, fans right here blowing air this way, I'm not sure if the fans would be both blowing out in the same way and then creating a vacuum, like kind of like all the air is being tugged. I'm not sure if that would happen. I guess I would have to do it and just test. And I'm not sure if enough air would be able to be supplied coming through here to suck it out. Maybe 
um, the location of these fans would not just be directly here. Maybe I could figure it out. I'm not sure. Because I haven't done it yet, but I'll figure it out. Maybe even putting a fan, putting little fans up in here, blowing in. And then if you're blowing air in, you're it's like a turbo. That's a turbo in a car. So a turbo in a car is it's a vacuum that's blowing air directly into the motor. You're pushing more air in so you can get more air out. So maybe we'll turbo this PS3 by putting fans here, blowing air down, out, and then also out. So these fans, it wouldn't be creating a vacuum because they're getting airflow from in here, sucking it out. So that could be an option. It's definitely, it's definitely a project and something that I would play with. For what I do now, is I just add the potentiometer to this existing fan so you have control and you can just crank it up because the temperature, there's a temperature gauge somewhere in here that de that detects the temperature of the, of the board and then tells the fan how fast to go. And that sucks. It never, it never tells it to go up high when it needs it to and it'll tell it to go up high. I don't know. I just don't. I never see it working properly, so that's why I like the manual control of the potentiometer. Oh, and the biggest thing, I shouldn't have said this last because this is the most important. Open your consoles and clean them. Having a clean console is very important because there's no dust to create additional heat by impeding the airflow. You don't want that. You don't want that at all. So it's very important to always open up these consoles, clean them, so there's no dirt. So yeah, so anyway, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for checking out all my other videos. And uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And I got a lot more videos to come. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And thank you for checking out the channel. I'll see you guys next time.